when I was a kid, uh, my parents exposed me to a lot of old movie musicals. And I grew up in a small town in northern Ontario where, you know, sports was my life and all those things. But something in those old movie musicals uh, lit my fire. I wanted to sing like that and dance like that and be in those kind of situations. And I've never stopped wanting to be part of that. Uh, luckily, I get to be part of that now in, in my own way. Not in old movie musicals, obviously, but on Broadway. And those were a huge inspiration for me. I still watch them and still get lit up by them for whatever reason. They connected with me and uh, they have influenced what I wanted to do with my uh, acting and singing and dancing career. Yeah, the bottom line of being a uh, performer who does plays and musical theater, the foundation for all of that is acting, no question about it. The greatest dancers, and I'm, I don't pretend to be one of them, but the greatest dancers are, are great actors mm -hmm. because they make you feel through their movement and they are telling a story. And that's really what an actor is there for, is to facilitate and to tell a story. Whether you're out front saying the words, whether you're in the back row um, sending your energy to the person sending, you know, saying the words or, or interacting with the, the person beside you on stage, it's all about telling the story. And so while I love to sing and I would call myself a singer and I love to dance and I would call myself a dancer, the foundation for all of what I do is on stage is acting is being an actor. Um, when you have those moments, you, I have often described it as it's electric. You know, it feels electric. So what does that mean uh, while it's happening? There's a, there's a feeling of um, ecstasy sometimes, you know, jubilation, like riding the wave, the crest of a... Of, of a you know, of a big laugh or a big round of applause and coming on the top of that and moving on and creating the next one. And um, there is a elation to it all. I'm wired in a way where I have done shows for two years at a time, let's say, on Broadway. And I literally love going out on stage every single time. I'm just weird that way. I just, uh, maybe getting to theater some days, you feel like you're a little tired or you know, wish I didn't have to leave my family just then, or I'm missing an event or something, but once I get there and get on stage, and there's an audience and they're responding, um, and that comes with the material too. There are certain shows that lend themselves to that electricity because you're in a position where you can, you know how, some, somewhat how the audience is gonna respond, and when that happens, it just lifts everything. Um, so there's a, uh, there, I, jubilation is a good word. I never said that before about it, but it is. It's like, whew, I'm doing what I love to do, you know, and it's happening. And those people are with me and we're, you know, feeding off each other. And, uh, yeah, it's exciting. I would say, too, there, in my job as an actor, there's sort of three, just as I think about it, there are three things, three elements that are regularly my job. Auditioning for a show. Uh, rehearsing a show and then performing a show and when you ask you know how does it feel when you know it's uh, really happening in the in the you know the best way you know when I'm when I'm preparing for an audition and I get an idea that that's the way I should do a particular scene or I think of something that I realize this is the best one I think of something that is really a risk like it could go either way in the room, but I know that probably, but it, but it came to me and it, I was inspired to do it a certain way. Those are the moments where then in the room and I'm just going for it and I know they're either gonna go, oh, no, sorry, goodbye, or they're gonna go, oh, we didn't think of that, or that was wild, I can't believe he chose to do that. Um, but those moments where something comes to me and then I follow through on that risk that's a moment, even in the auditioning phase of the three sort of elements of my work, where I can feel like, even if I don't get the job, but I know how I felt and the way it went in the room, um, there is a, there's a, uh, that's a feeling like, 
you you can't get. And it's different than the rehearsing and the performing part of it. But in the audition in the audition phase, when you have an idea, you know it's a risk, follow through and go for it, and it works. There's nothing. That's a great feeling. I can't imagine a world. I can't imagine a world without the arts being available to help people escape, to change the way people think, to uh, motivate them, to um, make them think about their own life and evaluate things. Or I just can't. I, Take just for a second. Imagine how dark of a world it would be without, you know, um, without the arts. And it, it, what's the point? I think who, Churchill. I don't know the quote, but it's about like, what are we fighting for if not, you know, that? You can fill that in here somewhere. The quote, Churchill quote. Um, but uh, so for mine in particular, uh, I'm in a show right now where. Um, so many young people are coming to see the show, coming to the theater for the first time. And when you come out and meet, you know, there's, there's at least 100 people at the stage door every, every night. And you come out and see those little faces and they're just, uh, been tr they've been transported, you know, they, and they are seeing the theater for the first time. And they're going to remember that moment, you know, forever. It is, uh, it is something that they can't get anywhere else. You know, it's not like going to a movie. It's not like, um, uh, you know, sport, going to a sporting event. It's not, like, it's not like anything else when they go and they hear that music and they see these people on stage and they get lost in the story. You know, it, it is an enhancer of life that you can't find anywhere else. Well, the, the first thing that comes to mind right there is having seen other people work at a level and perform at a level that makes me a aspire to want to be able to do that in that sort of way that I'm not capable of at this stage and want to to grow into and b uh, that makes me so grateful that I'm an actor because I look at how it impacted me and impacted the people around me. And I sit sometimes and watch these, you know, I can think of key ones along the way that I've seen of, of actors in plays or in musicals where I just, uh, you know, am blown away or moved or sitting there after the theater's emptied and, you know, still sort of lost in my thoughts or, you know, with tears coming down my face or whatever it was from these performances. And I find that very inspirational. Um, and just going to the theater, frankly, when I was first moved to New York and went to acting school, uh, I went and saw everything. Our school would get us free tickets to things. That was part of their thing. And I saw off-Broadway, Broadway, dance, opera, you name it. And when I went to see a, a play or a musical, if it was really great, I had that aspirational feeling like oh my gosh I want to I want to be an actor and I want to I mean I was but I want I want to be that kind of I want to you know grow into that and then if it was bad I was like oh they're working and I can do that so I found that inspirational too whether it I found whether I responded to it in a way that I thought it was phenomenal or whether I responded to it in a way that I thought was uh, not very good both of those elements were inspirational to me because one, in one way I was aspiring to it, and in the other way I was like, okay, I can do this. Uh, I did a show uh, recently for about a year and a half in New York called Cagney that was challenging for me on every level. Uh, vocally, physically, emotionally at times. Um, it was just a beast of a role to do eight times a week. And there were several occasions along the way. I mean, I, it was something that I had to gear up for and be in fourth gear when I started the show to get through it without hurting myself and to give what the piece required uh, to, to carry that show because I was playing Cagney and didn't leave the stage too much. But there were several occasions while doing that where I would just finish the show and... 
and be uh, even even though I'd been out there for two hours and I was drenched in sweat and, and I know for a fact I lost weight during the show and all those sorts of things, I felt so energized at the end of the show and so fired up because it had just gone by and it was truly one of those times where you were in the moment all, all the way along and you put the train on the tracks at the beginning of the show and then it just roared ahead and I wasn't managing my way vocally or physically through the show because I felt great. I wasn't um, because I was a writer on the show, I wasn't analyzing what should change and what wasn't, which oftentimes I had to consciously in a show take that hat off so I could just be present. But there were several times when I got through that performance where, and near the end of the show, for example, I, ha I did these great big sort of spinning barrel turns all the way across the stage. And some nights I felt like uh, I just wasn't going to come down. It just felt like as light as it could be. And, 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 uh, um, those were, those were the, uh, those were moments I'll never forget. I, I mean, the feeling afterwards of the energized and the audience elation and the community that the six of us on stage just had going through that show. And when we were all feeling that way, it was pretty special. I think the, the theater that, or the the storytelling um, in theater or in film or in a dance piece or anything like that that really um, gets exciting is it takes, I would say to this person who's never seen it before, think of the moments in your life where you've felt the greatest elation or the darkest sorrow or the um, biggest fears and those sorts of things. And within these performances and these stories, uh, there is this heightened you're going to see in your in 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 the stuff you you watch on stage you're going to react because it will trigger something in you that you've experienced in some way in your life and it causes emotion and might cause you to look at what you went through that's being portrayed on stage in a heightened way or that particular moment in a in a new way um so it's stories and your life has been a story you who have never seen a performance before your life has been a story um, and you're going to see um, a sort of heightened part of an, another story that's probably going to make you react in a really unique way that nothing else could make you react um, like. That's how I try to describe it to someone who's never seen it. Uh, and why is that important? Because, uh, and I would, I would broaden it then because maybe you can get that from a book, a particular book, like writing, or uh, there's a different set of emotions, I think, that come from listening to music, just per se, because I think that then you put it through your own filter, as you do everything, but that's not a separate story necessarily, except for the one you might make up in your head as, it, as you respond to a piece of music. Um, but certainly what a great film or a great stage production does is uh, oftentimes trigger something in you that uh, couldn't be triggered any other way. It's because you're seeing something you relate to up there and it, and it, uh, it connects to something in your own life and makes you think about that and maybe even discover things or um, give you hope at times or you know, make you be able to laugh at it in a way you hadn't before. Uh, it's a unique, it's a, uh, it's a unique facilitator for reflecting on your own life. One thing that surprised me that you don't know before you get into a long running show, people say, well, don't you get tired of doing the same thing every night? And the answer for me is no, I don't. And I guess that's kind of surprising because in going through when you're training or before you've made it to a point where you get to be in a long, with the privilege of being in a long running show, you're doing one show and it ends and you go on to the next and you're gaining all these experiences and each one is exciting and sort of framed in that time period. And then if you're fortunate enough and you end up uh, like me having to support a family and do those, and you end up in a long running Broadway show or a longer running Broadway show, uh, people would say, don't you get tired of that? And 
I love it every time. Uh, it becomes a job. It's not like it's, it's not like every night is opening night, uh, and you do it eight times a week, and it's, you know, it's work, uh, and sometimes, you know, there might be a day where you don't feel like going there necessarily in that moment, but the doing of it, the doing of it each time never, literally never gets old. And if I have one of those electric nights, you can't wait to do it again the next time. I just want to want to go again. And if you have a night that's kind of off, or wasn't, you know, didn't kind of all click the way it usually does, A, what I've learned because I'm old, is that the audience never knows that. They, they were just as ecstatic as they might have been the night before. When you get to this stage, it's all sort of in this range. And whether you felt like this or felt like this, they still see it in this range. And so if it's ecstatic, I can't wait to do it the next time. And if it's a little off, I can't wait to do it the next time. Because, you know, you want to you nail it. And um, so that's kind of surprising. The fact that I could go, you know, and do uh, hundreds of performances of the same thing and look forward to it and enjoy it literally every single time. Um, what else surprises me? <clears throat> well, just as you say that, one thing I'll, I'll, I'll share because it brought it to my mind is while any actor's career, no matter how successful they are or how long they've labored and haven't been successful, the ones who make a career out of it, it there's always going to be ebbs and flows. There just is. And um, for me, what I've learned now looking back and and it was conscious a lot of the time and it was unconscious some of the times, but I've never given myself the option to do anything else. So when I was young and I was going out to do shows and I would make a little money and come back to New York, I didn't rush out and get a waitering job. Uh, you know, I would <laughs> go take classes and go see shows with the belief that something else was coming. And that was a little different than I know some people function. And But that's for me what I... Uh, and I guess maybe it surprised me or maybe not as I look back because of who my parents were and stuff. I've never lost my belief that the next thing is coming or that I'm going to keep doing this. Um, I just haven't, even in the ebbs and flows and the question of, oh, I should be further along than I am or, you know, I wish I was better at this or that, da, 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 da. At the bottom of that has been the belief that I'm doing what I was put here to do and uh, as I've gotten older, the belief that I'm good at it and what I bring is what only what I can bring. I'm not trying to be something I'm not or uh, it makes auditioning a lot easier because you go in and do the best you can, prepare, let it rip. If you get it, great. If you don't, I wasn't, you know, doesn't mean I'm not talented. It just means it wasn't right for that part. But at the bottom of this ebb and flow has been a belief that is that really hasn't gone away. And... I guess that's surprising in a way. You can't tell whether you're going to be able to hang in like that over time. And I'll say this to you, and I've said it to my wife and to a couple other maybe core people. I wouldn't say it to the world except for now. But I feel like I'm just getting started. Even though I've been doing this for 25 years since I got out of acting school, uh, I, I literally feel like things are just starting like in a whole new way right now. So... And I, maybe I'm weird that way, but the belief is, the belief, I guess, is what I'm, kind of, I guess, surprises me, but also that I'm grateful that I'm, that I have that, because I think one needs it if you're going to go for the, the long haul and be happy while you do it. I mean, some people can go for the long haul, but they can be tormented in the middle because uh, they might lose the belief. And I, I think I'm just very fortunate and grateful that I am able to maintain that. <clears throat>